All right, so let's go ahead and play a little bit here with some Pasca, All right? This is beige, and this is ivory, right? You tell me the difference, I don't know. So, just gonna start to, first of all, I gotta shake the markers. This is how I keep myself company when my beloved is on call. So this sketchbook is fairly large, as you can tell by the size of my hand and the fact that you can't see three of the edges of it. You can only see this edge over here. Um, these Posca markers, this little point that it has here is really quite lovely. It's rigid enough that you don't feel like it's going to lose its shape too quickly. And the flow is incredible. It's very, very good, nice, even, fast, kind of smooth flow. As you can tell, you can also use the side a little bit. So that was beige. Let's go in with some ivory. The ivory is a little bit lighter and definitely has a little more yellow, which makes it cooler than the beige, which leans a little bit more towards orange. So I'm just playing. I'm allowing myself the opportunity to play with these. I'm also getting to know the versatility, the limitations of these Posca marker bullet shaped 0.7. There it is right there. This camera doesn't like to focus on its own, but it's there. 0.7 bullet shaped unique Posca. Marker. So these are uh, some trees that I painted from life while the sun was going down. It was quite a lovely sunset and I just kind of had to get outside and try to interpret it in my own way just to say that I did, you know? Just to feed that artist's ego that some of us don't like to admit is there. But in order to do something repeatedly and want to share it with the world, there's, 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 there's definitely an ego there. Um, we do things that make us feel good, and usually things that make us feel good are things that we're good at or things that we keep getting better at, or maybe it's both. So I'm just um, going back in over these lighter edges of the leaves just to beef them up a little bit. Hope you're enjoying my late night radio host voice. Hope it relaxes you. Kind of channeling some Bob Ross vibes right now. And you know, while you watch this, you really should be drawing. You know, we've all been there. It's just so much easier to watch somebody else make art and kind of live through that moment than to take out all the art supplies, set everything up so that it's easy to reach, and then think about something that we want to draw or find some kind of inf inspiration or reference, right? So, you know, that's, that's the challenge, right? Chuck Close said, inspiration is for amateurs. As professionals, we just get to work, right? And there's a lot of truth to that. 
because you need to give yourself the opportunity for things to start happening that's also known as inspiration right if you sit around and wait for inspiration what usually happens is you're not ready to seize it because you're not surrounded by your art materials or you're not in a place or a time where you can dedicate to making some art so first comes getting to work giving yourself the opportunity giving yourself the space the time the uninterrupted moments You don't have to be inspired to set yourself up. It's a decision that we all have to make. We all have to find time in our day to do the things that make us happy. And if you like to just scribble around on a paper, then that's your thing. Art is many things for many people, you know. It's a meditation, it's a statement, it's a powerful, loud visual voice. It's a universal language that we all understand with our eyes. It's much easier to understand a language than it is to speak a language, which is why a lot of people give up on trying to learn how to draw or work with visual materials because even though they've been exposed to visual language their whole life they understand it pretty well it's much harder to sit down and try to learn a new set of skills right so I'm going to grab a different color here because right around like here right there's this big old shadow from this building which makes the rest of this composition much cooler this is just good old gray right if you surround a neutral gray with warms it's gonna look like blue Right, and that's one of the basic concepts of color theory is that every color is relative to the colors that are around it. Um, Nobody can really explain why we see color that way, but it's definitely... um, It's consistent pretty much across the globe that how we see color definitely depends on the colors around it. And it also depends on the color or the temperature of the light, right? Sometimes that can get very dramatic and very, very heavily distort the local color or the incidental color that objects actually have versus the colors that we see on the same object, just depending on the temperature of the light, right? So this gray here, because I'm putting it on a brown and this background is a warm black, it does feel like a little bit of reflected blue sky from from up here somewhere. It's reflecting down on on the scene here. I'm gonna grab. Let's see. I guess I'll grab actual blue. Gotta give it a good shake. Let's see what it can do here for me. Yeah, the flow, the flow of these things is just 
savage mode, bro. Like, look at that. It just, it just glows on there. It just pops. Nice bold colors coming at ya. Let's go back up here to the sky. Let's hit it with some more intense saturated oranges here. Only on some of the leaves. The leaves that I want to come forward a little bit. Saturation, the higher it is, the more color in the color, the, the more forward or the more towards the viewer it's going to appear. It kind of jumps off the page a little bit. That's how saturation works. Mm, my belief is that because there's more color, you're using more, more of your cones and rods and your retina to kind of, to see that color. You're activating more. So because you're using more cells in your eye, the cones and the rods just kind of, it gives the, uh, the impression that it jumps at you. It's more exciting for your eye because you're literally using more of your eye. But I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. So. Oh, sorry. I got a little camera shake going there. Getting a little too excited. It's pretty hard to draw looking at the camera. It's definitely not like looking into a magnifying glass to draw. That feels like you're drawing this ginormous thing where every little movement is amplified and it makes detail much easier to do. If you've never drawn with a magnifying glass, you're, you're missing out. The entire drawing instrument just, it, it grows so much through the magnifying glass that it becomes very easy to control the minuscule movements of your hand and that tool I find it to be easier to draw that way I haven't done it in a while but I've been known to pick up a magnifying glass every now and then just to see the world differently How are you guys doing? You're still uh, still awake? Still awake on this late night radio talk show coming to you live from Sword and Book Studio. <laughs> 